Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about wallets. All right, so in the last video I explained generally what the blockchain is, not very in like specific terms uh, for like specific networks like Bitcoin or Ethereum, but just in general conceptually what it is. And in this video, I wanna talk uh, just in general conceptually what a wallet is. So in the context of interacting with the blockchain, you'll be using a wallet. And so what, what is that? So in practical terms, a wallet is a piece of software that, uh, you know, holds coins and lets you interact with the blockchain by signing, uh, signing uh, transactions uh, to be put on the blockchain. So essentially a wallet is a public and private key pair uh, given from an asymmetrical uh, encryption algorithm. Let's say you're a developer, you've probably worked with at least uh, some encryption in your life, so you have symmetrical uh, encryption like AES, and uh, essentially what that does is, uh, let's say you have a payload that you want to encrypt, uh, you can encrypt it with a key, an AES, or just some uh, secret key, you can encrypt the data, you can send it to someone else, it'll be a, a ciphertext, so you won't really know it's gonna be you know, obfuscated. And if that other person knows the key, then they can decrypt it to get the payload. That's like at a very basic level what symmetrical encryption is. Well, asymmetrical encryption means that there's a public and private key pair. So the most common uh, or the most popular asymmetrical uh, encryption algorithm is RSA. Um, and in that context, RSA, you have, uh, let's say you, you pick, uh, two really big prime numbers and, uh, you know, I'm not going to bore you with the math, but you essentially do, uh, you know, exponent manipulation and, uh, uh and yeah, we're, we're not going to go into it, but you can, you can find online how it works. To be honest, uh, it's been a while for me, so I can't really explain it in simple terms. But uh, regardless, in the context of blockchain, uh, they're not using RSA. But the, 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 the idea is important that essentially you can do two things with uh, an asymmetrical uh, encryption algorithm. The first thing you can do is you can sign a payload. So signature is to prove uh, authenticity. So let's say there's two parties, person A and person B. If person A sends a payload, so for example, let's let's say it's a string, it's a it's just a sentence, it's a the apple is red, you know that's like the secret message. And person A wants to validate that person B is who they say they are. Uh, they'll uh, so person B because they have a public they they have a public and private key pair. Um, the public key is known to the public. It's it's public. Uh, you you can uh, you know it's not something to be kept secret. So when person A sends the payload to person B, then person B can um, encode the, the, the payload, the, the sense the apple is red, with their private key, and they'll return a cipher text or a text that's like randomized, obfuscated, back to person A. And if person B is who they say they are, then person A can use person B's uh, public key to retrieve uh, the original message and they will know that person B is who they say they are because uh, the only way that um, you can decrypt a payload with someone's public key is if it was encrypted with the, their private key. And so that's a, 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 a way to validate if a person is who they say they are. So that is in the context of encryption, that's called a signature. Essentially what a wallet is, is a public and private key pair. So the algorithm used by both Ethereum and Bitcoin is the ecliptic curve digital signature algorithm. And uh, essentially, uh, it is somewhat similar to RSA as in it is a, uh, an asymmetrical uh, encryption algorithm, but there's a big difference. Uh, in RSA, the first thing is that you can uh, encrypt data so in RSA, what you can do, like in the last example, that was an example of signature. Uh, in RSA, you can also encrypt data. So uh, instead of um, you being given a payload that you encrypt with your private key that to be decrypted with your public key, it's inversed. Uh, you have a secret payload 
and uh, you only want you to be able to read it, then you'll use your public key to encrypt it. Uh, and it can only be read, uh, read with your private key. And since you're the only one who has your private key, then you're the only one who can uh, uh, read and interpret the payload. Well, in the context of the uh, ecliptic curve digital signature algorithm, there's no uh, encryption progress uh, process. Now, I'm still not going to bore you with the details of uh, the ecliptic curve, the ECDSA algorithm, uh, mostly because uh, I'm still very new to it and uh, don't really like. I'm not going to sit here and uh, say I'm expert and on how it works. Uh, but essentially, uh, why Ethereum and Bitcoin use that algorithm instead of RSA is mostly because the key sizes are different. So um, you, you, for that same level of security, uh, the key sizes of the ECDA are, are, can be much smaller uh, as opposed to RSA. All right, so now that you've graduated from my five-minute uh, university uh, certificate level of uh, encryption uh, course, which is definitely a thing, uh, we can now talk about what a wallet is. So when you're using uh, the blockchain to do sign transactions, uh, you know, hold coins and stuff like that, uh, the wallet is only a, 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 pub, a public and private key pair. Now, it's not actually as simple as saying it's a public and private key pair, uh, because when uh, you're going to be uh, interacting with the blockchain, you're going to be using software that are called wallets. So these pieces of software are essentially holding your private key and exposing your public key and uh, aiding you in the process of signing transactions. So when you interact with a decentralized application, which we'll be talking about in the future, uh, you connect to that website with uh, your wallet. And what that means is uh, whether you're using a MetaMask wallet, which is a web wallet or a mobile wallet or a hardware wallet or a desktop wallet, uh, all of these things, all these uh, different types of wallets are public and private key pairs. But uh, the persistence of where the private key is will vary uh, between all these uh, solutions. So for example, uh, you can have a hardware wallet where your private key will be stored uh, on the on the hardware so it won't be accessible to the internet and that's like the way safer than let's say a web-based wallet which uh, has to store your private key on your computer and in theory is accessible by you know if, uh, if you're getting hacked uh, from some attack of course uh, like these wallets are uh, you know they have a password and so the the private keys will still be encrypted with your password of course um, but still uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. So that was the first thing to talk about wallets is you have, you know, some available on web, mobile, so they'll be platform specific. Um, so that's like the first thing to keep in mind about choosing a wallet is where, it, where it is based. So you want most of your, you know, if you're going to hold a lot of coins, uh, like, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies, then obviously, uh, long-term you'd want it away from the most, like the most away from the internet as possible. When you'll be creating uh, one of these wallets, uh, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll be given a, uh, well, I think most wallets or all uh, work with mnemonic recovery phrases. So essentially you'll, you'll be uh, receiving a, a list of like 12 to 24 words uh, to store. Uh, and that's like your recovery seed. So essentially you have a list of 12 to 24 words, like English words, like uh, potato, uh, you know, skydiving, whatever. Um, and these words uh, help to generate private keys. So for every uh, recovery key that is like a 12 to 24 word sentence, you can derive a bunch of private keys from that. And so from those private keys, you can derive a bunch of public keys. So one uh, set of a, one recovery sentence actually gives you access to a bunch of uh, public and private key pairs. So that's uh, one thing to keep in mind. Uh, this 12 to 24 word uh, yeah, recovery sentence you want to keep uh, ideally away from the internet, away from a computer. You want to write it down on a piece of paper, like a good old paper does the trick, uh, and store it somewhere safe. So even, even regardless of whether or not the 12 to 24 word sentence is stored away from the computer, uh, your private keys will still be stored on a computer in the context of a web wallet or a desktop wallet. So it's important to um, you know use wallets like for smaller transactions, it's fine to use uh, web wallets and stuff. It's kind of like every day, you, you know, you use your credit card and then you pay back your credit card for your bank account kind of thing. Obviously, it, it doesn't really compare at all. 
but let's say if someone has access to your credit card, they can't like steal, uh, you know, all of your ha your house or your uh, you know your bank accounts and stuff like that. Uh, uh, that's kind of the concept. Uh, that's just like a security issue. Uh, not that uh, you know I use web wallets every day. Um, that's one thing. Then the other thing to consider is some wallets will be able to uh, hold the uh, currencies from different uh, networks. So you have uh, you know wallets that you can store your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Solana coins, or whatever coins. Uh, and some wallets are only like network specific. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And then like all of like all types of software, uh, most of these wallets solve the problem you're looking for. Uh, some have better uh, user experience than others and stuff like that. So that's uh, another thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, so let's say for, uh, and I'm not gonna pick like winners and looters, but a good place to start for like Ethereum is like MetaMask. It's like the, the most used wallet. It's a web wallet. So, you know, it wouldn't uh, store too much uh, in those just for, you know, security. Not that it's not secure. It's just uh, if your computer gets compromised, then you're, you're compromised. Now, another note is uh, a lot of platforms have their own wallets. So on, let's say, centralized exchanges, uh, if you want to deposit coins in, a, in an exchange to buy coins and stuff like that, they will have their own wallet. Uh, but it's important to note that the, the wallet that is, you know, quote unquote yours. So let's say, for example, uh, you go to CoinSquare or Coinbase, uh, you want to buy some Ethereum, you buy some Ethereum and it goes into that wallet. Uh, the wallet on the exchanges don't belong to you. Like you don't have the private key or anything like that. So it's best, it's best to not like keep assets for long on those platforms and move them to your own, uh, your own wallets. Uh, because essentially, you know, they're holding the coins for you, but really they're in their possession. Uh, that's just another, uh, thing to keep in mind. So once you have your wallet, uh, you'd be ready to go on an exchange and purchase coins and uh, or interact with any decentralized applications uh, like uh, like DeFi apps, which is decentralized finance, uh, either to loan, provide liquidity, or uh, to interact and with any type of application, which we'll be going further in what, what is available in the ecosystem uh, right now. Now, when you connect to these apps, uh, the app will have access to a few things. So it'll have access to your, like, uh, your, uh, your public key, it'll have maybe access to your token balances, so for example, in Bola Banker, our bankless invoicing, accounting and payment uh, application, once you connect your wallet, uh, you'd like be ready to create invoices and make payments and see all your past payments and what you're due, what people are, uh, what other, your, maybe your suppliers are due to you. So this is one of the reasons I wanna make videos is because it can kind of be confusing to get started and stuff. So once you get a wallet, uh, you know, that's the first thing, you know, writing your recovery phrase down, uh, then you can kind of get started and connecting to apps, uh, some apps. So the user experience is kind of getting better in the space for, for our app. Uh, you can just connect, uh, to our app and get started creating invoices. So we're trying to really improve the experience, uh, and make it easy for people to get started. Uh, but with new technology, it's not always that simple. So I hope this helps you understand what a wallet is when you're interacting with wallets, getting wallets, uh, which wallets to pick. And the next few videos, we'll be talking about more topics like smart contracts and the difference between blockchain networks and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, still getting used to making videos, a bit camera shy, but hey, it's fine. Uh, leave a like and leave a comment uh, about other topics and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, subscribe for more. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Peace.